A progress check a few weeks in on Madison's new bus rapid transit system to see how the rollout has gone in the early stages. And an update on Hurricane Milton as it churns in the Gulf of Mexico, taking aim at what could be a devastating few days ahead for the Florida Gulf Coast. And how your polling place is even safer in Wisconsin than many parts of the nation. You can be sure you're casting your ballot securely just ahead. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 5. And we are following some breaking news out of Janesville where police say that in two separate incidents they found bodies near the same gazebo within days of each other. Officers say they found an unresponsive man near a gazebo on North Washington near Traxler Park on Sunday. He was later pronounced dead. And then this morning, just after 11, officers were sent to the same area for another unresponsive man who was also pronounced dead at the scene. There is no indication of any foul play or trauma. Authorities say there is no threat to the public. That investigation is ongoing. We are a few weeks now into Madison's new bus rapid transit system. The city still working through some growing pains. We're a few weeks into it now, and Jalen Banks joins us now live from one of those stops with more information. Jalen? Eric, just behind me is one of the stops of the Metro Transit Rapid Bus System, and it's been a topic of discussion throughout the city for a few weeks now, but Metro Transit announcing earlier today that there have been some disruptions on Monday due to some fleet issues. Now parts of Route B were canceled because of a shortage in the flyer at electric bus fleet. The reason for that is the route uses a different charging process than the buses of Route A. I caught up with some passengers of the bus system and they say, you know, despite a lot of the changes, these are expected issues. I'd like the public to, uh, to just be a little patient and see how this rolls out. Um, but as, you know, as Madison grows, it's only going to keep growing and get more densely populated. Buses that run in the middle lanes is, is only, is a much better system than, than on the sides. Now, Route B runs from downtown Madison on East Washington all the way to Sun Prairie. Now, we'll continue to keep you updated on that fleet in particular and Route B. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you in studio reporting live in, down in Madison. Jalen Banks, News 3 Now. All right, Jalen, thank you. We take a live look now at Clearwater, Florida, part of the heavy populated, heavily populated Tampa metro area where many residents have cleared out. Looks nice now, but they are bracing for a possible direct hit from Hurricane Milton. And this would be the city's first direct hit in over 100 years as crews are still cleaning up debris from Hurricane Helene, trying to keep those items from becoming projectiles during Milton's landfall. Let's get a look at our first one forecast now. With meteorologist Kelly Slivka keeping a close eye on things in the Gulf. Kelly. I actually did a downgrade down to a category four this morning. Actually, the eye wall that uh, did go through some redevelopment phase, and that typically happens in ma many hurricanes, and that's exactly what happened with Milton overnight. But now it's regathered strength, winds up to 165 miles per hour as it is churning through the uh, Gulf of Mexico. We go to our maps here. Uh, we can see this uh, on our visible satellite. Milton, just north of the Yucatan Peninsula, is in the open waters now, and the waters in the Gulf of Mexico are in the mid to upper 80s, running about two to three degrees above average for this time of the year and you can definitely see that eye wall there's really nothing at least for now to weaken it eventually there will be a trough that'll move on in and that may weaken it a little bit before it makes landfall it looks like sometime late wednesday night or early thursday morning well look at us we got beautiful skies clear blue skies 69 degrees the winds are out of the north northwest right now at eight the humidity way down lots of sunshine throughout the week we continue to be dry looks like we'll uh, be peaking as far as temperatures on Friday when we hit the low 80s. Then we have a cold front that'll drop us back into the 60s this weekend. 71 right now in Middleton, 72 in Verona, 69 in Madison, also Cottage Grove. So a really nice evening setting up. Temperatures will back off pretty quickly. We'll fall through the 50s. Well, more on Milton and our weekend forecast that does bring in some changes coming up. All right, Kelly, thank you. The Dane County Medical Examiner has confirmed the identity of a woman whose body was pulled from a pond on the city's west side last Thursday afternoon. 24-year-old Brooke Stratton was reported missing early last week. She was found near where she had last been seen in the area of Odana Road at Whitney Way in a pond on the Arboretum property. The cause of death is still uncertain. Officers say the man she was last seen with will be questioned on Stratton's disappearance. Well, when you make your way to your polling place in November, there are federal laws in place to make sure you can cast your ballot freely and safely. 
Here in Wisconsin, there are even more safeguards in that process. Our Maddie Heimsch joins us with the details. Maddie? Yeah, Eric, we've heard increased rhetoric both nationally and at the state level about voter fraud and election integrity. So with the election fast approaching, I sat down with our officials right here in Madison to see what you can expect at the polls next month. No one should be afraid to vote. It's your right. It's your responsibility. Dane County Clerk Scott McDonald says that while voters may be nervous about casting their ballots and participating in the election as a whole, Wisconsinites shouldn't worry come election day. There hasn't been any efforts to sort of attack polling places that didn't happen in 2020. We haven't heard about any plans along those lines. Federal law bans intimidation, threats, and coercion at any time during the voting process. It's also illegal to spread misinformation to prevent people from casting their ballots. And in Wisconsin, there are even more safeguards in place. Each polling place in Wisconsin, uh, the thousands and thousands of polling places, whether it's an elementary school cafeteria or uh, you know, in the auxiliary room of a church. Um, there are established safety procedures and protocols. Wisconsin specifically prohibits soliciting someone to show how they cast their vote, using threats of violence to stop someone from voting, and engaging in disorderly conduct at or near a polling place. The American Civil Liberties Union says that instances of voter intimidation are, quote, rare and unlikely. But in the case that something does go wrong, the chief inspector is keeping an eye out for any electioneering or anything that's disrupting the election process. Madison City Clerk Mary Beth Witzel Bale says election officials and poll workers are trained to enforce rules and procedures to maintain order. So they are prepared and they're trained to make sure that everything runs smoothly at your polling place on election day. McDonald and Witzel Bale tell me there are measures being taken to ensure not only that voters are safe, but that election officials and poll workers are protected from threats or harassment as well. Maddie, thank you. President Biden is setting a deadline to replace a majority of lead pipes in the United States over the next 10 years. That goal started today right here in Wisconsin at a White House event in Milwaukee. The president announced a rule by the EPA to replace those lead service lines, which are a major source of lead exposure. The EPA is now investing $2.6 billion for drinking water upgrades and lead pipe replacements. Over the years, we've only chipped away at the problem. But chipping at a problem hasn't fully solved it. It's taken too long. It hasn't been given a high enough priority until now. In Milwaukee, the city is already replacing its lead pipes with federal funding, cutting the 60-year timeline down to just 10 years. The EPA estimates the rule will prevent up to 900,000 infants from being born at a low birth weight and reduce up to 1,500 cases of premature death from heart disease. In addition to the campaign stops, the candidates are flooding Wisconsin airwaves with political ads. But just how effective are those ads? Our political reporter, Will Keneally, joins us with more. Will? Well, Eric, flooding is right. Imagine, though, if you're an incumbent state legislator running for re-election this fall, but because the district lines have shifted, you have a new district with new voters, and you have to introduce yourself. So what goes into that strategy? One expert says it's a complicated calculation about what ads they put in front of your eyes. A Packers Sunday football game costs a lot of money, but if you're at the top of the ticket or a U.S. Senate candidate, it may be a really wise investment because there are so many eyeballs on it. So in many cases, it's going to depend on your objectives and the office that you're running for. But depending on who you are, that might be out of reach for a down-ballot candidate. Legislative, state senate, or state assembly race, to be able to break through what we call ad clutter. Ad clutter is the amount of advertising that's out there that makes it very difficult to break through with a message unless you're spending a lot of money. So with such an intense focus on Wisconsin in the presidential race, those ads come at a premium. But it also depends on who you want to get your message to. Those uh, folks that do have TV at home or cable at home are higher propensity voters. You're going to get an older audience that is more likely to vote. Much of the political ground is being fought over voters who are less likely to go to the polls. And campaigns may find them on other forms of media. A lot of talk about how candidates um, are going directly to influencers. Harris, for instance, made an appearance on a popular podcast this past week. Some of the ads, especially on digital, can be extremely targeted as well. Um, you can create digital ads that speak directly to the needs of uh, rural um, uh, folks or farmers or whomever you're talking to and target those ads to that audience as well as doing the other kind of advertising that you may want to do with suburban or urban voters. 
And as he's mentioning, it's a delicate balance to play for those rural voters. To target them, you can target them on the issues, but using traditional TV ads may get you a better reach to those communities. The consensus, though, the ads will not stop here in a key state like Wisconsin. All right, Will, thank you. Pop culture icon Charo will be stopping at the Al Ringling Theater in Baraboo for her first ever Wisconsin performance. Charo's shows are filled with humor and a flamenco guitar performance that will take place this Friday at 7 p.m. She said she's excited to bring her multifaceted show to the recently renovated theater in Baraboo, adding it's her first time in Wisconsin. Looks forward to the challenge of engaging with a new audience. What challenge? I've been it. Every Capricorn I know will like challenge. Barabu, for me, I swear on God, is the greatest challenge perhaps in my career because it's a new territory. I hope they remember me. You can watch our extended one-on-one -on -one interview with Charles right now at channel3000.com. And Kelly will return next, a complete look at your first worn forecast and an update on Milton. And we have a date for what will be the first major concert at Camp Randall Stadium in 28 years. I'll tell you when Coldplay is coming to town just ahead. And a quick check of the markets, the NASDAQ, its best day in three weeks, up 259 points. The Dow Jones Industrial Average climbs 126, S&P 500 adds 55, and we'll be right back. You're watching News 3 Now, brought to you by Cardinal Heating and Air Conditioning. My name is Bill. I am retired. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I live here in Wisconsin. I am not a political person, but Eric Covde doesn't understand how important Social Security and Medicare are around here. I'm on Social Security, and Hudvey said he absolutely supported cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Imagine working longer, paying into the system, and then poof, you're paying your bills with less. He knows it. Cutting Social Security and Medicare will cost us. He just doesn't care. When Senate is responsible for the content of this message. Not everyone knows us, but in Wisconsin, Illinois, and Indiana, we are famous in our field. As a Sloan's technician, customer service is our specialty. Whether you come to see us or we come to you, we are in the business of supporting your business, and we are highly trained to work on your John Deere equipment. At Sloan's, our loyalty lies with you. We depend on you, and we are proud to serve you. When it comes to service, you can count on us. Remember, think Sloan's first. Get an 11% rebate on everything for your next project at Menards. From hitches to ratchet straps and everything in between, we've got all your hauling needs covered. Right now, get this four-pack of ratchet straps for just $19.99 after rebate. Tow smarter with a Tow Smart Tri-Ball Mount Trailer Hitch. It features three different hitch ball sizes, and it's resistant to rust and corrosion. Pick it up for only $24.99 after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Building that middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. Compare that to Trump. He fights for himself and his billionaire friends. He intends to enact a national sales tax, the Trump tax, that would raise prices on middle class families by $4,000 a year. Instead of a tax hike, we will pass a middle class tax cut that will benefit more than 100 million Americans. Evan Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. It's Brad Beasley over at Tundraland, Wisconsin's trusted jacuzzi bath and shower remodeler. It's our fall into savings sale at Tundraland. In as little as one day, you can turn your bathroom from average to amazing. Your new jacuzzi shower will be the centerpiece of your home. If you act now, you'll get free installation with no money down, no payments, and no interest for a whole year. Call 1-800-TUNDRALAND or visit tundraland.com today. Tundraland.com Prices are up, wages are down, inflation is crushing Wisconsin families. Yet Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Even more radical, Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. Tax hikes and higher prices for families and those living on fixed incomes. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. Reject Sarah Kieski and her radical agenda. Watching News 3 Now at 5, moving forward. It has been a while, but Camp Randall Stadium will once again play host to a concert with Coldplay set to perform next summer. Our Kyle Pazorski reports. The iconic Camp Randall Stadium, home of Badger football and a history of memorable concerts, 
including that of the Rolling Stones and U2. News 3 was there in 1997 in anticipation of the Irish rock band's performance. They've got 400 tons of equipment, 200 feet of stage, and a slew of duct tape. Now, Madison's most iconic venue is set to see another generational talent, Coldplay. The seven-time Grammy-winning band releasing this past Friday their 10th studio album, Moon Music, and an additional 10 stops on their Music of the Spheres tour. It's going to be a big night for everybody. Charlie Goldstone is the co-president of the promotion company bringing Coldplay to the home of Jump Around. I mean, there's been a ton of attention, a ton of excitement. I think there's some magic about being in Camp Randall, which gives shows a little bit of a boost. Goldstone, along with Jason Ilstrup of Downtown Madison, Inc., tell News 3 now the return to a concert of this caliber to Camp Randall indicates a want amongst Madison's young and growing population. The city is growing, and we're growing with young people who honestly have some expendable income oftentimes to be able to go to concerts like this. Those interested in going will see lasers, fireworks, and of course, live music, plus a mystery guest to be announced at a later date. Ticket pre-sales begin Friday at 9 a.m. with general tickets going on sale at noon. At Camp Randall Stadium, Kyle Pizarski, News 3 Now. Kyle, thanks. And you can see more of that throwback video from our coverage of U2's 1997 concert. Just go to channel3000.com. Well, Florida residents continue to flee and brace for Hurricane Milton, which in the last hour has re-strengthened into a rare Category 5 hurricane. Now, Florida residents and states across the southeast clean up debris still from Hurricane Helene, which struck just over a week or so ago, North Carolina's 101st Airborne Division now helping people clear homes and businesses there. And in Florida, millions are trying to evacuate while the long lines build at gas stations and grocery stores. The mayor in Tampa says residents don't need to go across the country to be safe. You don't have to go out of state. You just have to get out of the way of that water. Run from the water, hide from the wind. Uh, Everybody in our Tampa Bay area has that phrase memorized by now. This, we could not underscore the importance of this anymore. Well, storm surges could affect the coasts of Georgia and South Carolina as well as Tampa. The city of Tampa preparing for up to 15 feet of storm surge. And Wisconsin utility crews are mobilizing to help restore power in the wake of this storm. Crews from 23 Wisconsin communities, including Columbus, Stoughton, Sun Prairie, Prairie to Sac, are all coming together to caravan down tomorrow morning. 25 bucket trucks, 50 line workers are taking part in this aid mission, and the crews should be in Florida by Friday. Well, you're taking a live look right now of the coastline of Florida as the storm is getting ready to make its way to shore there. It is pretty calm right now. The clouds starting to build in the distance, but some of those areas inland are at heavy risk of flooding as well as the rains from the storm are already hitting the southwestern part of Florida. Meteorologist Kelly Slifka has more on what to expect this week and the impacts Florida could expect from Hurricane Milton's landfall oh, in the next 24 hours or so. Kelly? Yeah, a couple of weeks have been just devastating for the northern half of Florida and much of the southeast. They're still reeling with all that flooding they had from Helene over there in parts of the southern Appalachian Mountains. Now we've got what we are looking at, a, a devastating hurricane. Right now you can really see this eye de defined, very circular. It actually went through an eye wall replacement overnight, so it actually weakened a little bit, but quickly with these warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico, and there's plenty of it out there, really enhance this storm system as it continues to move to the east-northeast at 9 miles per hour. It's about 480 miles from uh, Tampa right now to the southwest of Tampa. But it looks like it's headed right in that direction. You can see this on our computer model as we track this as it moves through the Gulf. Already by the evening hours, even though the official landing isn't until the center actually makes landfall, that's when we consider a landing of a hurricane. That looks like that won't be occurring until about midnight, but they're going to really see that eye wall in the Tampa St. Pe uh, Petersburg area, the west central coast of Florida already by tomorrow evening. Then that eye wall goes right over Tampa St. Pete, at least according to this computer model. Then we'll start to see it get sheared a little bit. There's an upper level trough that'll kind of disrupt its wind flow. So it will weaken as it moves across Florida, but still likely to be a hurricane as it moves across the entire state and not really weakening until it goes out into the Atlantic. And this is the official track looking at a category five hurricane, winds of 165 miles per hour, maintaining that strength until we get into the early afternoon hours tomorrow. It might start to weaken getting uh, wrapped up in that upper level low that I was talking about. As we get toward midnight, one o'clock in the morning, that's likely to be the landfall. Once again, the west central coast, very close to Tampa, St. Pete. The storm surge could be as high as 15 feet near Tampa, St. Pete. Obviously, Florida is very flat. All that water is just 
not going to have anywhere to go. So massive flooding expect, expected not only in Tampa St. Pete, but all of central Florida, because as mentioned, they're very flat and it's going to maintain its hurricane strength. I guess the only good news is it's actually moving fairly quickly, so it's not going to sit and spin like Helene did and brought all that flooding to parts of the southern, App southern Appalachians. For us, quiet weather. We can't even buy a cloud out there. Uh, it looks like it's going to be fairly quiet. We'll see uh, clear skies this evening, temperatures backing off through the 50s. We'll drop into the lower 40s, pretty seasonable for this time of the year. May see a little bit of frost in Adams and Juneau County. Maybe a couple degrees warmer tomorrow as we hit the low 70s. A lot of sunshine the rest of the week. We're on track for some 80s by Friday before a cold front drops us in the 60s. Hey, we had some beautiful uh, northern lights over the last several nights through the weekend. Thanks, Tom, for sending this in. And then Wendy got this in Madison as well. We got the fall color. We're we'll continuing to see more color, especially in northern Wisconsin. I would expect over the next week this will really start to jump out. So that warm air is going to be with us going through the end of the week. But by Saturday, we'll see that cold front slip through. And then actually kind of chilly Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday of next week. Then that cold air slides out on the east. We're right back to that warm weather pattern setting up for much of next week, even into the middle of October. Dry conditions will continue as well. Right now we're sitting at 69 while it's 73 in Janesville. First warm forecast, 71 tomorrow, 74 on Thursday. There's that 81 before backing down a little bit going into the weekend. All right, Kelly, thank you. We're heading for the cold and flu season as well. And next at 5, tell you about a new test, not just for COVID, but the flu. And you can do it at home. The story next. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Sometimes the smallest cracks can cause the biggest chills. Something sinister is lurking in the shadows. What was that? To survive. They must seal their fate. It's not working. With Feldco. 50% off windows end soon. Come now. This fall, watch out for the draft. For quality windows, siding and doors, call 866 for Feldco. When my husband got throat cancer, it wasn't just a health crisis. It was a financial one for my family. And that's something rural families know all too well. Joan Balwig voted against expanding affordable health care for rural families and against bringing drug costs down. And that's one reason I decided to run against her. I'm Sarah Kieski and I'm running for state senate because when someone you love needs medical care, the last thing you should have to worry about is how to pay for it. My name is Norma. I'm a two-time Trump voter. I will not be voting for Trump this time around. I'm voting for Kamala Harris. I cannot support Trump again because I don't trust him. I feel he's a liar. I feel he's for himself. I feel like he's going to take our country down a really evil, dark path. I want to be on the right side of history, and voting for Trump would be on the wrong side of history. Republican Accountability Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. They've been rocking audiences for decades. It's Boghat. Performing live November 30th at Ho Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. I just want to make with special guest, The Empty Pockets. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. Legendary rock band Fog Hat. Live in concert November 30th at Ho Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Get a great night's sleep on a new Beautyrest mattress from Steinhoffels. Right now, save up to $300 on Beautyrest mattresses, plus save $300 on adjustable bases. Queen Beautyrest mattresses start at just $399. Upgrade your sleep to the luxury and comfort of the Beautyrest Black. Queen Beautyrest Black mattresses start at only $38 per month, and you'll get up to $300 in Steinhoffels cash. Shop in store or online at steinhoffels.com. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. I am totally opposed to abortion. You heard him. I am totally opposed to abortion. What would Eric Hubby do in the Senate? Mitch McConnell and extremists would gain a majority. The power to ban abortion nationwide. No exceptions for rape or incest. Criminal penalties for doctors. More extreme anti-abortion judges on the courts. I am totally opposed to abortion. Eric Hubby, what's wrong with this guy? 
You're watching News 3 Now at 5. The FDA is approving a combination at-home test for both flu and COVID. This test will use a nasal, nasal swab and can detect influenza A, B, and COVID-19. It's expected to deliver at-home results in about 15 minutes for those experiencing respiratory symptoms. HealGen's Rapid Check is the first over-the-counter test that can detect flu to be authorized for marketing. The test can be performed by those 14 and older taking their own sample and can be administered to those two and older with the help of an adult. Children's Wisconsin has been ranked as the state's best children's hospital and among the best in the country for eight pediatric specialties. That's according to U.S. News and World Report. Some specialties ranked by the report are cancer, diabetes, endocrinology, and neurology. The annual rankings recognize top pediatric facilities across the country and hope to help parents, caregivers, and physicians in choosing the best care. Data was collected from 108 children's hospitals and thousands of specialists. If you're hoping to ship a package for the holiday season, the U.S. Postal Service releasing its dates to have things arrive before Christmas Day. For ground service and first class mail shipped by December 18th for priority mail shipped by the 19th and for priority mail express the 21st. If you plan on sending any packages internationally, check the complete list at usps.com slash shipping dates. And we'll be back with a final check of your first warrant forecast after a short break. Billionaire banker Eric Hovde has a plan for Social Security. Do you favor either raising the retirement age or cutting benefits? I favor both. Raising the retirement age? You have to start changing the retirement age. Hovde wants to raise the retirement age as high as 72. And Hovde just proposed cutting Social Security by 28%, costing the average beneficiary more than $6,000 a year. Eric Hovde, what's wrong with this guy? I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. When replacing your windows, you want them to be built by the best and backed by the best. That's what you'll get with replacement windows only available from Renewal by Anderson. When you choose Renewal by Anderson and want to keep remodeling, you're not getting a one-size-fits-all product. From design and sales to manufacturing, installation, and service, we own the entire process. This month only, save $377 per window and $777 per patio door. Plus one year, no payment, no interest financing. Visit wantakeepremodeling.com for more details. You don't need to battle addiction alone. Contact the great people at Wood Violet Recovery today. You could be on your way to recovery the same day. Wood Violet Recovery works with a wide range of insurance networks, so a large portion of your treatment may be covered. Wood Violet Recovery will create the treatment plan that best suits your needs. Unlike other rehab facilities, phones and laptops are welcome. Today may feel dark, but there's a brighter tomorrow. Contact Wood Violet Recovery now. Think Sloan's first. You know, the big thing about Sloan's is the ease of doing business. They make everything simple. We choose Sloan's and John Deere because we have availability of equipment, quality service, quality parts, and they have the ability to keep us up and running. Gear up for fall savings time is on now at Sloan Implement. Get your John Deere Z530M with 1.9% for 36 months. Includes your 54-inch mowing deck. Power up with Sloan's. Think Sloan's first. Are undocumented immigrants that are the least likely to commit a crime? <laughs> Meet Edwin Ramos. This illegal immigrant murdered three Americans. An MS-13 gang member, Ramos was arrested for a gun crime. But as DA, Kamala didn't prosecute him. Months later, Ramos murdered a man and his two sons in cold blood. Are undocumented immigrants that are the least likely to commit a crime? <laughs> Preserve America Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. Like a bowl of cherries, life in Attic Angel is healthy and sweet. Our independent and assisted living lifestyles include newly renovated apartments, engaging social activities, and wellness support that is tailored to you. As time marches on, we promote the idea that life can always be a bowl of cherries. Attic Angel, the house that angels built. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. 
All eyes are on Hurricane Milton down there. A lot of thoughts with the folks uh, along Florida's Gulf Coast and what a what a powerful storm that is. Winds of 165 miles Unreal. per hour and Tampa St. Pete has never seen anything like this. Oh. So Around here, crystal clear skies. Beautiful uh, evening on tap. Right now we're at 69, 72 in Lone Rock, 74 in Basketball. So it's going to be a nice day uh, tomorrow again, 71. It's kind of a repeat of today, 74. On Thursday, 81 Friday before some cooler weather. The dry weather carried in the week a little bit cooler by Monday and Tuesday. Right. CBS Evening News is next. More on Milton, and we'll be back in 30 minutes for News Renown 6.